Hi, welcome back to Chop It Up with the Chairman. And this week's episode is none other than the City of Conyers Police Chief, Chief Gene Wilson. Chief, welcome to Chop It Up with the Chairman. We're excited about having you here. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about. We understand you're getting ready to wrap up your tenure with the City of Conyers, but we want to talk about your long career in law enforcement and um, what you think is going in terms of the future of law enforcement, not just here in the city of Conyers and Rockdale County, but across the nation. We're going to jump right in there. And I, I want to start off by asking you, how many years of service uh, will this give you now uh, in law enforcement as a whole? It'll be 51 years total. 51 years. Chief, I'm telling you, uh, that is a, a record that's just uh, not heard of these days. And we certainly do appreciate all of your years of service. Now, break that down for me, Chief. How many years with the city of Conyers? I've been with Conyers 12 and a half years. 12 and a half years. I, I remember the excitement when uh, you came into the city several years ago because you came uh, to the city of Conyers from which agency? I came from actually from the CDC. Okay. And before the CDC, I'd been at Sandy Springs uh, as the chief started that department. Okay. And before that, I had been at MARTA for, uh, I was at MARTA for almost 16 years. As yes, chief. sir. And then before that, I was at DeKalb County for right at 20 years. And I actually started out uh, in the city of Atlanta, and I was there about six months before I went to DeKalb County. Wow. Wow. What an extensive and wonderful career in law enforcement. Chief, you've seen a lot of things over your years of experience, 50 plus years in law enforcement. Um, not all. I know you got a world of police stories and, and the things of memories that some make you laugh. Some may even make you cry a little bit. Uh, when you think about your 51 years overall, I'll come back to the city of Conyers in just a moment. When you think about your 51 years of, of service as a law enforcement officer, what are those maybe number one through number three things that stand out that you say, I'll never forget this? Number one, what would it be? I think number one is going to be how the demographics of law enforcement have changed. When I started policing, uh, let's say in DeKalb, uh, there were no female officers at all. And I can remember the first females that came in were, were juvenile detectives, and they couldn't go out unless there was a male with them. Mm. Uh, I guess the second thing would be the technology, how much the technology has changed, um, how much more sophisticated it's gotten today than it was when, when I first started. Uh, and I guess thirdly would be uh, just the difficulties that we're facing now um, seem to outpace anything that I've seen in the past. Chief, that's a lot. I mean, you think about those three things that you pointed out. Number one, you talked about the change in gender in terms of law enforcement. Now we have not only women involved and all through the ranks of law enforcement, we have a lot of women that are serving as chiefs of police. And in some places, women who are serving as sheriffs. So that's a big, big difference. And uh, uh, I know that means a lot to you to see those demographics have changed in, in a very positive way, I think we might say. Oh, yeah, I agree. I think it, it needed to happen. And uh, I've known some very, very good uh, female police officers. Very good. Now, the second one was technology. You, Chief, you're absolutely right. I, I mean, t technology is changing from today to tomorrow and the next day. But when you think about law enforcement and how crimes are solved, how police are policing and how they're engaging with the public, what are one of the things about technology that you would say you're happy about or you're proud to see come to fruition? I think it's the fact that it, 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 it helps us to work smarter, not necessarily harder. Um, I think the technology nowadays has, has really enhanced the ability to do investigations. And I think it, it has enhanced in, in patrol the safety aspect. Uh, the body-worn cameras themselves have been just a, a phenomenal change in the way we do business, uh, not only for the good of the police officer, but for the good of the public. 
Yes, sir. And and I think the third one you were talking about, basically um, the world of law enforcement, type of law enforcement officers and what we're dealing with in this world, all the things that we're up against, uh, that a law enforcement officer is up against. Uh, you know, I've talked with, of course, Sheriff Levitt, and I've talked with other law enforcement agents. I've got friends who are still in law enforcement, and they talk about the fact that it's really tough to recruit and it's often, oftentimes tough to retain folks because you're competing against so many different agencies because at the end of the day, uh, a law enforcement officer has to take care of his or her family. Speak to um, the difficulties of recruitment and retention and where you think this whole world of, uh, of law enforcement trying to get good men and women to serve. I think the recruitment now is more difficult than I have ever seen it. In my, in my years. Uh, I can remember at DeKalb, uh, I was at one time over internal affairs and we also did recruiting. That was part of what I had. And we had, we had hundreds of applications just sitting there waiting to be processed. Nowadays we sit and wait for each application to come in hoping to get one in. Wow. Uh, you, and it, the difficulty in, in retaining people nowadays uh, the generations, of course, they have changed the, the way they see themselves, the way they see policing, uh, the way they react to organization and organization policies and procedures. All of that has changed. Uh, but I think that right now that recruiting is as difficult as I have seen it. If you, um, as you're leaving the city of Conyers or prepared to leave and move into your complete retirement, uh, if you really had one solid thing to say, uh, perhaps both to the mayor and the new incoming chief, what would that number one thing uh, you would be saying as you exit and, and head out the door? Is take care of your people. Take care of your people. Yeah, take care of your people. Chief, why do you feel that's so important? Well, just like we talked, it's hard to get new recruits or new, new applicants in. But also, you spend a great deal of money training people and not only just training them, but getting them to buy in to the environment of the police department. And we, we try to be community focused. And that doesn't need to be one or two people. That needs to be, that needs to run the entire fabric of the department. And when people leave and you bring new people in, you've got to, you've got to take trying time to train them and then hope that they, that they become what you want them to become. Um, and I think that by taking care of your people and keeping the people that you've got, it, it, it short circuits a lot of those negatives that we, that we just talked about. Chief, you, you're spot on when it comes to taking care of your people because the level of appreciation from the men and women that, who are brave enough and courageous enough to put on the uniform and, and, and do the job that you've done now for 51 years, it says a lot when leadership believes and taking care of the people who take care of the people. Let's shift a little bit, Chief. I want to now, we talked about some things in general dealing with your career over the 51 years. I really want to zoom in on the city of Conyers. Um, I want to hear from you, Chief, about uh, when you came here to Conyers Police Department and the big difference from the time you started as Chief and where things are now that you're planning to uh, uh, retire. Well, when I first got here, we were struggling with getting with re, being recertified by the state. And of course, we ended up being recertified by the state. And not only that, we got internationally accredited. And I think that helped the department a great deal. I think the other thing that has changed has been the philosophy of the department. We're looking at, 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 at community policing as, like I said before, that's something that's the backbone of the department. And I think, too, that the, the, the amount of technology that has come into the department, uh, the cameras, the, the body-worn cameras, uh, the license plate readers, all the technology to do with, with what you can do with cell phones. Um, and I think just looking, too, in my just 12 and a half years, is looking at the people that are coming in are so much more technologically aware mm. than the people that were here when I first got here. Chief Wilson, I've watched your career here in Conyers since the time that I had an opportunity to meet you coming into the city of Conyers. And I've noticed how you have really been a big advocate of <clears throat> community engagement and communication. 
um, you've worked through a lot of issues in this uh, in this city by just talking to people, being present, and communicating and working problems out. Um, t- tell us a little bit about. Why do you believe in the strong thing of connecting with people and communicating and working through problems without necessarily throwing the book at folks, so to speak, or just locking everybody up? You've used a different approach, and it has been welcome in this community. Tell me why you believe that has really been effective and it works for you. I think you want to treat people the way you want to be treated. And, you know, we have policy upon policy upon policy. Uh, and you can you can throw the book in your, your words and you know people left and right, but I think the fact that if you if you retrain them, if you communicate with them, if you let them know what you want them to do, and how you want them to do it, and what you expect out of them, but that they also have to expect to be held accountable for for what they do and how they do it. Um, I know coming up, uh, and I'm sure you were in the same situation that it was very rigid, it was very paramilitary, um, and, and you, didn't question, you didn't question the policies or the procedures. Well, today's generations are, are different than that. They want to question everything. And, and you better be ready for an answer, and it better be more than that's just the policy or that's just the way we do it. And I think that by doing that, you get them to engage in how you want them to police and how you want them to interact inside the community. Well, I'll tell you, we appreciate that approach, and it has been very effective here in the city of Conyers. Uh, I've heard from citizens all over the city uh, who have had very wonderful experiences talking with you. The number one thing people say to me about Chief Wilson, he's a straight shooter, but he'll work with you. And that is very uh, much appreciated, and particularly with a tough job uh, serving as a law enforcement officer, not to mention being the chief of police. I want to shift just a little bit more here okay. and, and get into some um, uh, uh, what I call uh, tough conversation. And what, what a little bit of the tough conversation, Chief, you've got 51 years of service, 12 years right here with the city of Conyers. Uh, there's been a lot over the last most recent 36 months, uh, uh, the elephant in the room, the black, the white, the Black Lives Matter, uh, all of the different things. We saw the January 6th invasion of the, the nation's capital. There's been a lot that's been going on in our communities. Communities have been shattered. Um, there's a lot of issues going on with um, people have just not embracing law enforcement uh, the way they used to. <clears throat> Let's start with this race issue. Uh, and I've seen you work in, right, in, in the city of Conyers, and you've dealt with that monster uh, head on, and you've done it very smoothly in a classic way. What is your real take on race relations as it, as it relates to law enforcement and the community, Chief? That's a good question. I think the community still, I think the majority of the community support law enforcement, but they support law enforcement to be done in the correct way. And I, I think we've seen in areas where law enforcement has stepped back from doing the day-to-day investigation, the day-in-day enforcement, and we have seen the crime numbers go through the roof. And I think that you, I think part of that is that they feel like that the community, they, the law enforcement officers, feel like the community no longer supports them. And they may not. Uh, in, in, in Conyers and Rockdale County, I feel like the community does support law enforcement, but they, they, want, they want law enforcement to be fair. They want it to be equitable. Um, they, want, they want law enforcement to be held accountable. And I think those things are, are, the, are the difficult aspects of actually supervising or managing an organization now is make sure that you balance all those things with the community needs. Chief, you talked about earlier uh, coming from a time and a place, and and I was a law enforcement officer, a little bit of that time and place where, like you said, things were more rigid. Um, It was more of a paramilitary understanding. You basically do what you're told to do, and you don't do a lot of questioning back in the day. You've talked about the transition of the new day, the new world of law enforcement, and a new level of professional law enforcement. I've heard you speak about being a professional law person, a lawman. Um, talk about, tell us why professionalism and ethics 
in law enforcement is so critical and important in these times? I think ethics, If in, in this job, if you lose your ethical background, if you lose your ethics, you're through. And I think nowadays people expect and they want to see law enforcement officers be ethical, not only in their private lives, but in their public life. And I think that it takes, uh, it takes a lot of work to make sure that you stay uh, where you're supposed to be. Um, and I mean, every once in a while you'll have cases where officers step outside the boundaries. And sometimes you can bring them back, but if it's an ethical issue, a lot of times you can't bring them back simply because the, the, the ability from that point on for them to do their job is going to be in question. Chief, when you have an encounter, I say you or one of your officers have an encounter with anybody uh, on the street as they do on a day-to-day -day basis, but when you have an encounter where a citizen feel like he or she has been done wrong or mistreated or not treated fairly, what is the first thing you prefer that citizen to really do if they feel like they've got a legitimate and valid complaint or concern uh, they need to express to some to, to, to leadership in law enforcement. What what would you recommend that the citizen do? I want them to make a complaint. Uh, that's uh, we don't we may not know that we've got an issue unless we're notified of that issue. Okay. Now a lot of times the complaints will not be substantiated. Uh, that's one that's one place that the body worn cameras have come in so helpful is because people will come in and they'll say, you know, I was treated badly or I was treated rudely. You show them the camera and you show them the images and they realize that maybe they weren't. It was just the heat and the emotion of the moment. Nobody wants to be stopped for a traffic ticket. Nobody wants to be stopped uh, for any sort of investigation. That's just not what we're, we're just not, nobody wants that. They just don't want that to happen. But when it does, emotion kicks in and sometimes, uh, you can you can feel that you have been mistreated when you haven't, but that's not to say sometimes our officers may not in fact make a mistake, or or be overly zealous. And we, as the management of the department, we need to know that, so that we can try to correct that behavior. Very good, very good, Chief. Before we go to break, I want another question. I want to ask you is, I've watched you transform the city of Conyers. Uh, police department. And let me be very clear. Uh, when I say transform, I think you've taken it to a whole different level. For many, many years, I, I know several um, current police officers that work for you and, and current officer, former officers who, has, who have worked for the city of Conyers Police Department. And over the years, there's always been black officers and a few, a female here and there. But Chief, you've made a major demographical shift uh, why was it? It's, why was it so important to you to have a balanced department of black officers, Hispanics, uh, female officers throughout the different ranks? Some have come and gone, but you've you've maintained a look of what the community looks. Well, tell tell us about that, Chief. Well, I feel like when I got when I got to the department, uh, the demographics were not where I wanted them to be. Okay, and they certainly did not match the community. And we have worked hard to try to get that match, at least get it closer. Uh, but right now, as we have talked before, in the recruitment stage, um, minority officers are just sought out everywhere. And some of my best officers that I have had uh, that could have gone on up in rank have gone to better positions. And I can't, I can't, I, I, I can't fault them for that. Um, but I have felt all along that we needed to look more like the community and we needed to react to what the community wanted us to do. Chief, we certainly do appreciate. Folks, you're watching another segment of Chop It Up with the Chairman. This time we have Chief Gene Wilson from the city of Conyers. So thank you for tuning. We're going to go to break. We'll come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the days ahead of you, Chief, and what you think the community looks like going forward. I'm Chairman Oz Nesbitt. You're tuned in to Channel 23 with Chop It Up with the Chairman.
doing a tasting of everything we have to offer here at the kitchen from chicken and waffles to oh no you didn't to the king's burger lamb chops we got it all here Amazing, man. The wings is on point. Very good. Very really good. flavorful. The food is delicious. Delicious. So we're displaying this whole thing to Rock Dunn. Everybody in the neighborhood is exactly. So, you know, we're giving out some good food so everyone can try. And I'm excited to be doing this. Hi folks, thank you. Again, you're tuning in with Chop It Up with the Chairman and our guest at this segment is City of Conyers Police Chief, Chief Gene Wilson. Chief, you're getting ready to uh, uh, hang your hat up and uh, you're going to be taking your last call here, to, uh, so to speak, in, in, in a few days ahead. But before we talk about uh, your wrap up in law enforcement as a whole and certainly with the City of Conyers, Chief, I want to, um, I really want to hear from you. What are some of the things when you think about your legacy of the city of Conyers, this police department where you're serving as chief right now, if there's one thing that could stand out, and there may be more than one, but if there's one thing that stands out in your mind that you say, I really hope that uh, they will remember to do this or that my mark is left in this kind of way that they will carry on? And what would that thing be, Chief? Now that's another good question. I think that, I think the fact that we became internationally accredited would be one mark that I, that I think will be lasting because I feel like they will continue that. Um, the other thing I, I believe is the fact how we have, how the department has truly worked hard to reduce crime because out of the 12 years we've been here, we reduced crime 10 out of those 12 years. And I think that has been, that, that says just, it says mountains to how hard the officers have worked and how dedicated they've been to serving the community and reducing crime. I want to stay there just for a second, Chief. I don't want, I don't want to glaze over that. That's a big statistic in the world of crime and crime stats. The fact that out of 12 years, 10 of those years, you and your team have reduced the crime rate here in, in, in the city of Conyers tremendously. And what would you contribute that to if you had one thing more than anything to contribute that to in terms of reducing the crime rate in the city of Conyers? What would you contribute it to, Chief? I think it would be the officer's buy-in that our job here is to make this a safe city and no excuses. I mean, we can't stop all crime, let's be realistic but we can certainly have an effect on it. And they bought into that and it's been successful. Chief, that speaks volumes to your leadership and your leadership, your executive leadership team and command staff, because certainly to get that buy-in, it takes it starts from the top down and making sure that the officers that are out on the street uh, responding to those calls understand what customer service is all about and civic engagement. But it also goes to the dispatcher, the person sitting behind that radio and that console, being able to hear from what we call the customer, the citizen, yep. uh, sometimes called the complainant, and making sure that we can show a level of empathy and understanding what they're going going through. I, that, that really speaks volumes in order to make a big dent in reducing those numbers uh, yep. going forward. I think what I want to ask you at this point, Chief, um, uh, as you begin to uh, move into your retirement, uh, give me one of the most happy, memorable moments, whether it was with the city of Conyers or in the other part of your career, one of those things that just made you laugh or just brought you joy. What was that moment that comes to mind? Oh, that's another good question. You've, you've, <laughs> you've done good today. Um, <laughs> I think that it would, there would be two of them. The one of them would be uh, in 1974, I was a young officer in the cab and I was made police officer of the year. And it was a big deal back then and they had a big dinner and everything. And my parents were able to come and my wife 
And I think that I, that was a happy moment. Mm. Uh, and I think the other happiest moment is when I was hired by the city of Conyers. I, I was at the CDC. I wanted to get back into full-time law enforcement. And I think when I was hired here was another happy moment. Wow, Chief, that's, that's, that speaks volumes. Um, I, I, you almost took me there uh, all the way back to 1974 when you became officer. Yeah, I can just see as you were describing that moment, and I saw you light up as you was talking <laughs> about it, too. So that's, that's really good. Now, I'm going to wrap it up here. I, I, first of all, I want to say thank you for your service. Thank you for your service to the city of Conyers, uh, the county of Rockdale, and the people, Chief. Um, I always have appreciated your style of leadership and your style of law enforcement. Uh, I came up under uh, leaders like yourself when I was in law enforcement, serving as the chairman, knowing that we have over in our one city, the city of Conyers, having leadership like yourself from a law enforcement perspective has really made my job a lot lighter, knowing that we have someone with a level of integrity and the level of wisdom and experience, proven leadership to get the job done. You've taken us uh, from a, a mighty long way here in, in the city of Conyers, and we're very proud, and we certainly have honored. It's been a privilege to have you to serve as the chief of police. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for your service, and thank you to your family uh, for the sacrifice. Now, I'm hearing that this is your third retirement, chief? This is my third retirement, and it will be my last. What, what, what was your first one? First one was actually from DeKalb. So you retired from the uh, County. And then I retired from Marta. Marta. And now I'm retiring from here. Now you're telling you say this was definitely going to be the last one. This one's going to be the last. So one. I'm not going to read an article in about 90 days that you're going to be the chief somewhere else in, in no. the state of Georgia. No, you, you won't. You, you won't. I'm promised. You. <laughs> you're, you're wrapping it up. I'm wrapping it up. Before you wrapping it up, Chief, I believe there's a lot of young people who are watching this broadcast and who are going to see this in the days to come. Number one. Um, if you were speaking to a brand new class of rookie officers or recruits, what would you tell them about getting into the world of law enforcement? I would tell them to take care of themselves and to appreciate how much their family is going to be important in them being successful. And then I'm going to t I would tell them that they're taking on a huge responsibility and they need to be aware of that. And even though it may at, at some point it may all get routine, they've got to remember why they're there and why, and why they first joined up and why they first became a, a law enforcement officer. Very good. If you had a message for the community, the world and how people see law enforcement is totally different from when you started. It's totally different from when you came 12 years ago, even to the city of Conyers. And people see law enforcement in a whole different way. But if you had a chance to just talk to the people, what would you say to the community about working with law enforcement? Let's work to be more conciliatory toward each other. Um, with all the things that we see happening nowadays, I mean, somebody say something and say it wrong, the next thing you know, we've got a shooting situation. That's, I would say that to the community. And the other thing that I would say to any community is for the parents to be involved with their children, mm -hmm. uh, to be strongly involved with their children, uh, because uh, it, it's, it's a hard road for a young person now. Uh, there is a lot of pitfalls out there and I think the parents need to be totally involved with their children. Very good, very good. Chief, uh, I'm sure there's some elementary level kids going to be watching this, so I got a <laughs> couple of wrap-up questions for you. I only have three, I think. Number one, Chief, what's your favorite color? Favorite color is blue. Your favorite color is blue, absolutely. Uh, what's your favorite food, Chief? A uh, varsity hot dog. Varsity hot dog. What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, Chief, what are you going to do retirement? What's your favorite hobby? Uh, what is, what's that thing that you're really into and that you're going to move on into retirement, really getting to spend more time with? Well, that's another good question. I fool around with cars a little bit. I'm going to do that. But for a while, I'm just going to do nothing. <laughs> okay. You're going you're gonna to chill out and relax, as the young yeah. people would say. Yeah. Chief Wilson, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we appreciate your service to the city of Conyers. It's been a pleasure to get to know you personally as an individual, as a man, as a leader in our community. We um, 
We're going to be at your retirement uh, event, and we're looking forward to celebrating with you. Thank you so much for what you've done for our community. Thank you for uh, being willing to uh, be a part of this interview, and we're going to show this for days to come uh, in the days ahead with all of the folks in Rockdale County. Folks, you've been watching another segment of Chop It Up with the Chairman right here on Channel 23. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned as we move forward. This is Chairman Oz Nesbitt with Rockdale Channel 23, and Chop It Up with the chairman.